What's up everyone, Laconde Mwili here, back with another video, and we're talking K8s. In previous videos, I have covered pod affinity rules, volume topology awareness, and pod topology constraints. And these topics fall in the category of influencing how the Kubernetes scheduler behaves, and they each deal with applying specific constraints or rules to the pods, so that the scheduler knows how and where to place them on the different nodes in your cluster. Other similar approaches would be node selectors and node affinity rules but each of these still gets applied to the pods themselves. However, there's another way to influence where the scheduler places pods, but it requires making modifications to the actual nodes, and that's through the use of taints. With taints, you can essentially tell your nodes to repel or reject certain pod placements, as well as influence how strictly the scheduler should take the effects of these taints. Taints are key value pairs, just like labels, but they have an additional property called effect. And as the name implies, this property essentially allows you to determine the effective behavior of the node and scheduler in response to the taint. The different types of taint effects are no schedule, no execute, and prefer no schedule. And these effects basically define how nodes respond to pods that don't tolerate them. The no schedule effect means pods that don't tolerate the taint won't be scheduled on the node. However, if pods were scheduled to the node before the taint was applied, they won't be evicted and will continue to run as per norm but this rule or effect applies to any subsequent pod placements. Next, there is the no execute effect, uh, which will not only reject new pods that don't tolerate the taint, but will also evict any existing pods that don't match the taint. So it has a stronger effect on your pods than the no schedule effect. And then third is the prefer no schedule taint. And from the name, you can guess that it's softer than the previous two. Kubernetes will try not to schedule pods that don't tolerate the taints. So remember, the purpose of taints is to repel certain pods, but we don't want to repel every single one of them. So how do we place pods on nodes that have taints? And that's where tolerations come in. You've already heard me use the word tolerate in relation to the taint effect. Taints and tolerations work together so that nodes only run certain pods. And the same way that you can have multiple taints, similarly, your pods can have multiple tolerations. In order for a pod to tolerate a taint, it must match the exact same key value pair and effect of the taint. Another important property when matching tolerations to taints is the operator property. The operator value can either be equal, which is the default value, or it can be exists. If the operator is set to equal or not defined altogether because it's the default value, then the value from the taint has to be specified in the toleration. On the other hand, if you use the exists operator, then you don't need to specify the taint value. The key and effect will suffice as long as they match the taint. All right. Now we gotta ask, why even bother with taints and tolerations? Well, firstly, it's a great way to dedicate certain nodes or compute capacity to certain teams. If you think about multi-tenancy models where multiple teams are using a cluster, you can definitely set resource constraints on workloads, but it's also very useful to dedicate certain nodes to teams. And second, if there are pods that require specialized hardware, whether it's high compute or memory capacity, then adding taints can be useful to keep other workloads away from using up those dedicated nodes. And third, there may be situations where your node isn't yet ready, or it has disk or memory pressure, or it's experiencing some kind of network issue. If conditions like this are true, then the node controller will automatically add the appropriate taints to the nodes. All right, let's have a look at a basic example. All right, before we get going, just a few important things. I've already got a cluster running with a single node that will be used to run my static and more critical workloads like Core DNS and Carpenter. As you can see, there is the single node in my cluster. And in case you're not familiar with Carpenter, uh, Carpenter is a cluster autoscaler that responds to pods in a pending state by adding nodes to the cluster that fulfill the specific requirements of the pods that are in a pending state. And now in this scenario, we're going to use taints to ensure that nodes are only added to the cluster by Carpenter when the workloads in a pending state match the taints with the correct tolerations. Going to switch over to VS Code and scroll up over here. And I'm going to head over to the provisioner file. Now you can control the lifecycle actions. Let's get rid of that. You can control the lifecycle actions of the Carpenter controlled nodes using the provisioner custom resource definition or CRD. And provisioners allow you to define capacity constraints as well as behaviors for the nodes that they have launched, including adding taints to your nodes. As you can see over here, 
I've added a taint and the key is dedicated. The value is Node.js team. So we can assume that this is basically uh, a provisioner that only adds nodes to the cluster for a specific Node.js team or Node.js teams. And the effect is that if there are any workloads that do not match this taint with the correct tolerations, then pods should not be scheduled uh, to those uh, particular nodes. And remember, there is an additional property, which is operator. Um, and the operator in this case, by default, is equal. OK, so that is the provisioner file. Uh, now, the next thing that I want you to see is the workload manifest file. And so I'm going to switch over to the Node.js deployment file, as you can see here. And this is going to create five replicas for this particular application. And in addition to that, you'll notice under the spec section that I have added a node selector property over there. And so um, for this particular workload, this specifies that the pods should be scheduled to nodes that are managed by Carpenter. That is the key value pair over there. And I'm just going to quickly come back to the provisioner file. So you can see that this provisioner will also add um, these, this particular label to the Carpenter controlled nodes, which is managed by Carpenter. But uh, just remember, this particular deployment manifest has not specified any tolerations. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to deploy this particular application and let's see what happens. OK, so as you can see, the pods have failed to schedule. And the reason for this is that the one node in my cluster doesn't have the label that the workload is selecting because it's not controlled by Carpenter. And so the scheduler can't place them on this node. And so they go into a pending state. And remember, at that point, Carpenter detects them and tries to add nodes to the cluster. But remember, my Carpenter provisioner adds a taint to any nodes that it will add to the cluster. This That is with this specific Carpenter provisioner. And my current workload doesn't have any tolerations that match the taint on the node that Carpenter is trying to create. So let's take a closer look at just one of these pods and describe it. And I'm going to scroll right to the bottom. And you can see over here, uh, one node didn't match pods, node affinity or selector. So that was our, that is our single node that is currently running in the cluster. It doesn't have the appropriate label, and so the node selector can't match to it. And then next thing, uh, Carpenter, um, you can see over here just the from the from category, you can see the default scheduler. And then next thing we see under the Carpenter um, category or section, failed to provision new node incompatible with provisioner Node.js, did not tolerate this specific um, taint that we have applied for any nodes being created by this particular provisioner. And so our pods are stuck in a pending state, but we can fix that. So what I've done now is I've added a toleration that matches the exact taint of any nodes that would be created by this particular carpenter provisioner. So now I'm going to reapply this to my cluster. And you can see we've already got a new um, Kube proxy and AWS node uh, pod that pods rather that are being spun up because Carpenter has now gone to work and is in the process of creating a or adding a new node uh, so that there is additional capacity for these particular um, app, uh, pods to be added to the cluster and be correctly scheduled because now they've got a toleration that matches the taint. You can see Carpenter is actually launching an additional node because we still have a couple of more pods in a pending state. So you can see here, we initially just had the one node over here. Carpenter launched, launched a second one, and now we have a third node that is being created. You can see over here, this is the taint that we specified in the provisioner file. And there we have it. All of our pods have now been scheduled to the cluster and specifically to the additional nodes that Carpenter has added. And we've got a matching situation between our taint to the specific nodes and the tolerations that we specified 
on these pods, which are Node.js applications. So based on the scenario, we can assume that they belong to the Node.js team. And there you have it. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found that useful. If so, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more.